Tonight, it'll uh, start its second season here on CBS. A big welcome, please, for the lovely, the charming, the talented to Candace Bergen. <laughs> Have you been? Fine, thank you. We've decorated the studio for you, dozens of dollars. For us? Yeah, we oh. did that for you. We, and we appreciate you bringing the whole gang by here. Well, we're very excited. Yeah. Did you have a swell uh, summer vacation? Did yes, you, yeah? yes. You travel, you do things? I, I was in France. Now, that must is, is a connection with this mall guy? Yeah, well, yeah, we're your kind husband, of hooked up together. Yes, your husband, Louis Mall. <laughs> yeah. So he lives there most of the time? Well, no, we, we, we don't quite know where we are at, at this point. Like, we, what do you put on your 1040 for an address? I mean, well, what city would I find? I, you know, I seem to be mostly in Los Angeles now, but we we are uh, in France for the summers and in New York when we're not in Los Angeles, and um, it's hard. You have, do you have many children? Do you I, have, have one? I have one child and two stepchildren. Yeah. Now, if you ask the child, uh, you said, okay, where do you want to go live now? I mean, do you think, uh, do you pick what, what, what country, what city do you think the child would pick? Well, she's so used to rotating from the time she was four months old. She, she has always made a triangle between France, New York, and California. So if a certain number of months go by and she hasn't moved yet, she sort of says, you know, are we, are we going to France now? And so yeah. she's, that's, that's her routine. Do you know that the square of the hypotenuse of a right triangle is equal to the sum of the square of the two remaining sides? That's all I remember from high school. It's, uh, it's more than I remember from high school. I don't know why that has stuck in my brain. But, and I also know that what's on the crest label, but you probably don't want to hear that either. <laughs> now, oh, I'm sorry. You have to forgive me. I had a hard weekend. Uh, now, uh, you, um, I've seen your fellow cast members interviewed from time to time. And one of the questions that's interesting that comes up with them, they'll say, the interviewer will say, so were you intimidated when you first met this Bergen woman? And I'm, and I'm curious as to why people even think that as a question. I mean, I don't know you well, but you don't seem particularly intimidating. You seem like a relatively warm, despite that icy stare you're giving me now, you seem... <laughs> you know what I mean? You, you've heard that before. I mean, what, yeah. what, do you, what do you think it is that makes some people... I don't even, know. I don't know. They, they don't seem to... You, you don't intimidate people, do you? I, uh, no, no, I, I don't try to, no. Yeah, I wonder, I mean, do you think your life or your career would have been different if, like, your nose were bent a little bit and your, if you looked a little goofy? <laughs> yeah, I probably would have been in the sitcom much earlier. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing that people express surprise about is that you were, that you did the sitcom because there was also a feeling, well, Candy doesn't want to do television. Doesn't well, want to I do wish series. I'd done it sooner, this one, because it's just the best time I ever had and the best work and... And the, and the best people. It's just um, such a joy. You guys are wacky, I'm told, from time to time. Oh, on the set. We, uh, actually, all the time. Food in fights? fact, we sink to lower levels all, every month. It's just amazing. <laughs> just, just when you think the bathroom humor can't get any raunchier, someone takes it to a new frontier. Oh, it's, <laughs> oh, it's, it's fast uh, out are there. You, are you a participant or an observer? In this? I, I would say that I would be kind of a ringleader. Really? <laughs> Uh, so, like, what's the most disgusting thing you've ever said? No, I guess you're probably... This is, uh, I guess, in the privacy of your own uh, studio. We actually do have some outtakes, though, as we like to say, which is... Silly. Oh, but they don't come close to... Uh, really? Well, to say, to say, well, we could save that to talk about with Faith, but, for instance, at the rap party, Faith Ford and I did a, a little duet at the rap party with the guys as backup singers, of, um, a little song that we used to sing in college called Beaver's Out, and... Um, so it's about... It's about the, fo the, the well, woods it's about and the dam building. The environment. Sure. Yeah. It's important. It's important. Uh, otherwise, communities would, would flood. Uh, anyway, I, uh, maybe this would be a good time to look at the uh, at the clips. Would, would you mind? Because I, I'd love to. Uh, because I think I'm, it's the only course you have. Now. I will. I'm gonna have some cold water. Uh, anyway, there's some outtakes from the show, and I guess they sort of explain that. I, I, are you sort of waiting for the outtakes to be yeah. put up? Roll them, Marty! <laughs> Do a segment that is so provocative, so sensational, that everyone will watch it, and... And so there. <laughs> We've had a change of heart, Miles. We want people to watch Frank's piece on the homeless, and the only way to make that happen is to pull a stunt. Do a segment... <laughs> We've had a change of heart. <laughs> Murphy, you must be kidding.
furious. I was just downstairs in the coffee pot. <laughs> Remind me one day to tell you about the time the network tried to get me to anchor a broadcast with Garrick Hetley. Uh, er, er, er. <laughs> you know the guy that's kind of bald and... <laughs> uh, action. Murphy, it's never easy to team with a partner when you're used to working alone. Remind me one day to tell you about the time the network... <laughs> Every week, I'm tired. <laughs> no, no, I'm fine. Still rolling. Still rolling? Okay, Still rolling. Still rolling. Ready? And action. Murphy, it's never easy to team with a partner. <laughs> Still rolling. Still rolling. Who hasn't laughed yet? Okay. <laughs> Murphy, it's never easy to team with a partner when you're used to working alone. Remind me one day to tell you about the time. What a captivating woman. Oh, yeah? Well, then you go shopping with her while she drags you from store to store, forcing you to try on things to hate. You hate. <laughs> you go to the hairdresser. Uh, uh, yeah. Back it up. Back it up. What a captivating woman. Oh, yeah? Well, then you go shopping with her while she forces you to... Damn it, excuse me. Uh, what a fun. Thanks for bringing us. We'll take a break, and we'll be back with more with Candace Jordan. Go right there. Obviously, Murphy Brown Knight, and Murph is with us right here, uh, Candace Bergen. Uh, may we talk about your singing career? Oh. You, you uh, do uh, belt out a tune from time to time on the show. Well, I do with very little encouragement. In fact, there haven't been any this season. I was kind of disappointed. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I mean, but uh, you, uh, do you, do you, like in the shower, do you sing well? Are you you're good in there? I, I, I can't say that there's any place where I really am a good singer. <laughs> Really, with, not yeah. within the realm of possibility. You've for done me. some interesting things to some Motown classics. I have, yes. Yeah. I've mangled it, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but the... it gives me great pleasure. You re but you enjoy it. You're not, you're not like totally humiliated by it. No, it's odd though. Because isn't you really it? should be. Yeah. It's I mean, quirky. <laughs> no, no. It's, it's, but I, that's okay. I like singing too. Maybe we'll do a number someday. Yeah. yeah. What's your favorite Motown song? Well, I, I do. I am, you know, particularly fond of. Uh, Natural Woman, since that's what I sang in the pilot, but mm. um, I, I don't think we're really ready to sing. <laughs> no? All right. Well, I won't, I won't push it then. I'm just a thought. Uh, I think most people know that you, um, uh, you've had a lot of success as a, what should we call it, a photojournalist? Is that a, a good well, name? Well, yes, that's yeah. a good name. Yeah. That's, that's the traditional name for that's, it. That's what you, do you have to, do you miss, do you have, I assume you don't have much time for, for writing, for photography these days, or do you? I, I'm, um... I'm trying to read a newspaper uh, this year is my big goal, <laughs> and um, yeah. and I'm sort of hard pressed to do that. Yeah. Try USA Today, you can do that. <laughs> well, I wasn't going to try that. <laughs> it's great. Uh, do you miss it? Do you miss the opportunity? Yeah, I do. I do miss it, and and I used to love it when I did it, and I used to love that it gave you an avenue to pursue your curiosity and your interest about places and people. But, um, but I just thought I wouldn't get back to it until I could do it full time. Because if you, I found that it's something that if you pick it up without having done it for months, that you're shooting black and white at color speeds and, you know, the yeah. wrong lenses. And, you, and um, it's really a muscle that you have to keep exercising. Can you tell me why in my photographs the tops of everyone's heads are not there? <laughs> well, perhaps your vision needs to be corrected. <laughs> Just a little thought. Now, we uh, have one more piece we want to show while you're out here from the show, and this is a clip involving you. Now, this is not an outtake. This is a real thing that has seen, has or will see the light of day. That we'll see. Yeah. Uh, is this from the season opener? I just look at people who nod at me. <laughs> yes, it is, which, by the way, is next Monday night. That's right. On CBS. Do you care to say anything about this? Uh, oh, um, or do you know anything Well, about if it, it is a season opener, then it's, um, it's about Murphy who, uh, getting a crush on Miles Silverberg, who is the producer of FYI, on Miles' younger, extremely younger 
brother, well, younger to me, perhaps, not younger to you. Uh, secretary. What? Uh, it's the wrong clip, sorry. Um, just, no, just, we'll uh, edit that out and no I'll one will know. I'll just talk about it afterwards. Yeah, we'll, we'll see the clip. It'll be funny by itself, and then we'll tell you what you saw. It's kind of the way it'll work. Watch. Good morning. How may I help you? That's right, I'm Bambi, your special telephone friend. <laughs> What's your name? Oh, girl. Hi, Jeff. Are you ready to enjoy a deep and unbridled ecstasy that explodes beyond your wildest dreams? <laughs> Good, because as soon as I get your visa or your MasterCard number, Bambi's gonna teach you all sorts of nice little things. Excuse me. Bambi just got sent back to the forest. This is Thumper. <laughs> telling you to get off the phone and stop calling here because what oh all right i'm hot i'm hot i'm on fire yes yes faster slower oh boy oh baby oh baby <laughs> typical You vixen, you. <laughs> oh, baby, baby. <laughs> well, I was in a hurry. Yeah. You, <laughs> so was he. Three minutes. <laughs> yeah. uh, you do have problems on that show with secretaries. Uh, yeah. They, uh, different, yeah. Is it a different one every, uh, every, every, every Yes, episode? I think this week we're on 24. Yeah, this one obviously had a part-time job answering those, <laughs> answering those little phone lines. Uh, do you, is that going to, the tradition going to continue all season it, long? Um, I, think we, I think it is. You're yes. on to something there. Yeah. Do you yes. have a secretary? In, really? No, I don't. You don't? I don't. No, I don't have a secretary. Or I guess they're called personal assistants today. I don't have that. Do you have? I just don't answer my mail. What? Do you, uh, do you have a car phone? No. <laughs> I'd rather die. Really? No, I'm just, I'm just checking. I out. just think it's the, I just start laughing every time I see these guys in their convertibles and they're fixing their hair with one hand and talking on the phone with the other and the car just seems to drive itself. Do, do, I just think it's the dopiest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Dan, yeah. what kind of car do I drive? You drive a convertible. <laughs> what what, what do, do I have in there? You have a nice phone. <laughs> and you know she's right. Uh, I'll tell you what, we'll maybe a good time for another break, and uh, we will meet, uh, Joe, say Joe's last name, it's Regal Buto. Regal Buto. No, yeah. Regal Buto. Joe yeah, Regal Buto. It's something like that. This guy, this Joe guy is going to come out here from uh, Murphy Brown. Stay with us. like Regis and Kathy Lee out here. <laughs> oh, my yeah, goodness. Yeah, that's right. Our next guest is a self-help author. No, our next guest is uh, plays uh, Frank Fontana on your show. He, well, you know that. Why am I telling you? Why don't, why don't I tell them? Sure. Uh, and he's, he's nominated for an Emmy, as is this fine woman. Eleven nom nominations? Mm -hmm. Do you know how many nominations this show has? 112. Oh, it's well, it's, it's never the happened least before. You deserve. But you're you're a darn close second. Uh, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, he's he's been here before and, and he seems to be here again. Uh, Joe Rachel Buto. Joe. We did that with feeling. Okay, we go through this exercise when you hear, say your last name for me. Regalbuto. Well, I was pretty dark. Use close. a hand and it sort of flows oh, out. Oh, you're right, it does. Yeah, it, it does kind of help. I look a little silly doing this, but it, but it does kind of help. Uh, an Emmy nomination, you excited? Oh, it's, it's a terrific thing, you know. You, I think actors sort of down deep, you kind of harbor a, a little desire down there, but when it actually happens, it's... Uh, it's very exciting. It's very exciting. We love the show. We love doing it. I love the part. Uh, you know, the difficult thing is that um, 
I work with such a great cast, we should have all been nominated. That's the one, uh, yeah, but, one oversight. But if it had to be someone, aren't you glad it was you? Well, you know, if I win it, I'll take it home. But, <laughs> but you'll dedicate it to everyone. What your mother said. my mother, yeah. <laughs> you, you know, they have a way of bringing things down to reality. First of all, my mother-in-law says, um, uh, the Emmys, is, is that the big one that they do out there? <laughs> and then my mother says, you're going to win. I just know you're going to win, but if not, keep your health. That's, that's nice. I like that. I like kind that. Kind of a schizophrenic sense. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you, you are married? Yes, I am. I'm married for a long time now. I mean, we're talking decades? 17 years. Oh, that's good. Uh, now, that's not quite... From now. We, we always have... We have meetings before the show, and we always have debates on how many years of marriage get applause. And I, <laughs> I said 17 wouldn't be enough. Well, it shows you Especially what I know. Especially when you're 23 years old. It also old helps how the host says it. If I would say, you've been married 17 years, yeah! they applaud. But if I just sort of... <laughs> 17! The audience is well-trained. Yeah. Really <laughs> they are. We whip them into shape. Uh, now, all, you, had a, you had a birthday how long ago? Uh, just uh, about uh, what was it? Two weeks ago. And, and it, it was. Happened. It was. Uh, it was one number, of those uh, important ones. Number. It's more than 39 and less than 41. Yeah. yeah. It's, that, uh, it's a big one. Traumatic uh, time for some people. Well, it is. you know something. I've got to say this has been a, a pretty terrific year, hasn't it? Being in you know a show like Murphy Brown and all this Emmy stuff, and uh, we love. If this is 40, bring it on. You know. So you're okay. <laughs> no, no. So far. No trauma. So I remember asking Candace about this when she said. At 40, she had her child and, and was, didn't even think about it. Then 41 came along, and she got depressed and didn't know why. So, <laughs> it, was, it was recovering for 40. Well, 40 is so okay because you say, well, I was just, I was just 39. And then when, <laughs> when you're 41, you're in your 40s to stay. So, so next year you solidly depressed, in there, yeah. yeah, yeah. Exactly. Uh, now, we, uh, we have another uh, piece of uh, footage uh, from, and I'm told this is an, a scene that will not be in the finished oh. product. Aha! Uh -huh. But it's, it's thanks. From the brothers, <laughs> it's from the brother Silverberg. But it's supposedly such a funny scene that we should see it but anyway. They had to take it out. Okay, it's an, Diane. It's an, ex, it's an exclusive look at, 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 at a scene that this is, and, and it probably just ran. So, the laughter was so loud it ran long, <laughs> and they couldn't do it. So, do you know the scene? Well, uh, if uh, if it's from that one, uh, it was probably uh, Murphy uh, is is having a problem with. Uh, Falling for this younger guy, and she, I think, uh, asks my advice. Does that sound right? Mm, that, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, let's let's take a look because you won't actually see this on the show next week. Watch. Frank's, I'm in trouble. What do you mean? What kind of trouble? I met someone. Yeah. At lunch. Uh huh. A man. Ah. Sort of. Oh no. What I mean is, he's young. Although maybe I shouldn't prejudice you. When you hear his age, maybe you won't think anything of it. After all, it's not like he's a child. A child would be, say, 22 or less. He's older than that, and he seems extremely mature. Murph, just his... exactly what age are we talking about here? 27. <laughs> 27 isn't that bad. That's what I thought. I was just checking. I mean, after all, he was born in 1962, but that's a pretty long time ago. Winston Churchill was still alive. No one had ever heard of the Beatles. I was 14. <laughs> I'm surprised at you, Murph. Come on, you, you never let people bother you with things like this. If you like this guy, go for it. If people can't accept it, that's their problem. Good advice. Bye. By the way, Frank, there's one other thing I forgot to mention. This guy is Miles' brother. <laughs> Now, Joe, I hold in my hand a photograph, uh, and I think you owe America an explanation. May I show it right here? Where are we, where are we going to take a look? Right here? Uh, and, and Candace would like to know a little bit something about it, too. Um, uh, this is Joe, right here. And, and what's even worse, this you was... You never told me! This, oh, no. this was taken at a Denny's, too, which is... Uh, <laughs> No, what's the story? It's you and uh, Mr. Shackelford, isn't it? Yeah, what's what's yeah, the story on that? There's, <laughs> there's a uh, and you're uh, lovely, by the way. <laughs> well, there's a there's a love boat uh, reunion that they're doing, and in it I'm in disguise. The reason I took this part of the truth seriously is because I have beautiful legs. 
and I look very good in earrings, but uh, it's going to be it's going to be hard to live. We just this down. we just dug this out of our files. Oh, so that we, was we mean. Attempt, we attempt to humiliate guests whenever possible. Now I know the talking's fine. You're happy to be out here, but there's something else that's going to happen tonight that I know you're you're a little. Oh, yeah, frightened yeah, about it. Yeah, you I'm shouldn't not, be, because we're. This is not. It's a, a friendly group. It's, it's a, a friendly. It, it, you start a few years ago. Started playing. Yes, I started playing the uh, alto saxophone, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, occasionally people have said, "Do you want to go and uh, you know play it?" Uh, and I said, "Are you kidding? Play with the with a with a great band like uh, Tom over here?" And I said, "Oh dear." However. But this is not an audition. However, it's, we're just having fun. It's, it's, it's not an audition. It's a party. And, it's a know, happening. It's and uh, uh, and the band will earn their money tonight. <laughs> <laughs> no. So are you ready for this I'm, moment? I'm uh, ready. We have an audience on your be. side. They want to hear you. They'll enjoy you. Go ahead, Joe. Candace has to promise not to sing with me. <laughs> The Pat Sajak Show, sponsored by Oldsmobile and their all-new four-door Cutlass Supreme. And by Tri-Buffered Bufferin, Buffered Aspirin. Cleaning up last minute business, are you? Well, I guess you do have a busy so schedule, tense. don't you? Well, you don't get a car phone, you won't have to do this. Uh, our next guest plays uh, Corky Sherwood in Murphy Brown, which, by the way, has a season premiere next uh, Monday night at uh, 9 o'clock here on CBS. Uh, she's been here before, and uh, we sure enjoy having her around. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Faith Ford. <laughs> musical group. You're dancing, he's playing, <laughs> and you're married. You're well, married since the music made me want to dance because it's it? the Raisin song. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the subtitle, yeah. <laughs> the Raisin song. So uh, since last time you were here, you did it? You walked down the aisle? You, yeah. You, yeah. I did it. Did you do it back home? I did it back home. In Louisiana? Louisiana. It was a, it was a nice little southern wedding that I ended up, we ended up all painting together. Excuse me? <laughs> well, the day before the wedding, the deck wasn't painted, and that's where we were going to have it on the deck, because we couldn't have it in the yard, because the yard had washed away because of all the rain. <laughs> <laughs> so your, uh, your guests... So it was a new house. My parents just built a new house at home, so I had to, we had to paint in the rain. Uh-huh. This was so after we, the ceremony? So we wrote, a, we sort of like reworded the song, Singing in the Rain. We said, we're painting in the rain, we're painting in the rain. Boy, this is a musical show. <laughs> you know, speaking of, I don't know, do I well, dare do I, this? I love is a, love is a, you know that one, Faith? What is that? Oh, gosh, I can't do that. <laughs> it's Candace's favorite thing. Oh. Look. Well, I, you know. Love, love, you want to do it? Yeah, sure. It's not dirty. It's oh. not dirty. My mother knows. Mother just lit now. This is for Candace now. <laughs> Go ahead. Love is a nose, but you better not pick it. A handful oh, of boogers is all you <laughs> You know, actually, come at, we've been on the air nine months and no one has said the phrase handful of boogers yet. So, uh, we're, we're pretty proud of that, and, and you must be too. Hey, boy. I like that word. I would, I would rather hear the Bieber song, frankly. <laughs> if we have a choice. Uh, 
No? Well, it's better than... No, we can't do that. Oh, okay. Fine. Just the it's first, be... the first one. Well, oh, you are just a troublemaker. <laughs> this is... I have, I have to be... You go to your big hit sitcom. I have to well, sit here tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow night. Are we your first theme show? I, well, I think so. Actually, well, no... Well, is this not a hot show? So Where? there you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I feel better now. But, uh, if you want to do it, go ahead. Do do no, this. No, no, no. no yeah. Just, yeah, just the first part. Just the first part. Right. This was just a song that, that we used to sing in college. Um, it's kind of a college fight song. And uh, we'll just sing just the first couple of lines. Okay. Beavers out. Everybody gonna jump and run. Everybody gonna get him some beavers done. <laughs> Kind of our, it's our salute to Jerry Mathers tonight. We're <laughs> very excited. So did you go on a honeymoon? Did you... Uh, this is the Bahamas. Have a good time? I did, but I don't... <laughs> it's my honeymoon, Pat. What do you expect? I don't know. What I meant away from well, that. I, I, what I did was... You're getting married, too, aren't you? I am, yeah. Are you going to go on a honeymoon? Well, yeah, but probably a different one. You know, my parents told me. <laughs> what? You know, my parents told me that that you that you announced it on the air. I did, I did. I have no secrets. Was that the real announcing, or was it just sort of? Well, I mean, like I told my parents first. <laughs> I mean, in order, I told the Inquirer, my parents. <laughs> and then yeah, but yeah, we we did in Bahamas, and I didn't like the place very much. But I like the place, the whole place, but, but the place where the we place. stayed because well, we couldn't. Yeah. Well, I didn't want to say. <laughs> well, the food wasn't good, and, and there, it was supposed to be good, and I very love food a lot, you yeah. know, and, and it was too greasy. It was just, <laughs> I wanted to go in there and show those French chefs how to cook. Because you do cook. Yes. Without yes. grease. Without, well, not without grease, but, I mean, well, oil, olive oil, yeah. Joe. Like olive oil too. Now, do your do your does your family see like when you do shows like this? Do they they see you? Do they critique you? Do they? Yes. Maybe I'll tell them not to watch tonight. <laughs> no, they should. Only proud. because of beavers out. <laughs> I think we've made our point here. Uh, what do they say? Do they like the way you come off on these things? Well, yeah, they like you, Pat. Well, I'm a likable lug. They do. They like you. They watch your show every night, and they say, "Faith, do you know who?" Pat had on tonight, and I say yes, and they have to, they go through the whole thing, and they tell me, if I speak to them that, that next day after they've watched you that night. Am I boring <laughs> no, right no, now? No, no, not at all. I was just, no, no. I was just sort of waiting for a, for a semicolon. More about my honeymoon. Oh, you know what else I didn't like? You have to pay for everything with those beads. You don't have the beads. <laughs> That's right, they issue you, yeah? These beads, you know, and it's like everybody has them around the neck, and they gave us these little honeymooner shirts. <laughs> sounds adorable. It's really uh, cute. What, what does your husband do? Cute. He's an actor. He's an actor. He also has his real estate license. Yeah. He also... You want to say his name or... Uh... Robert Nottingham. He's here. Oh, is he? Oh, yeah, I the guy I'm... with the beads up there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> looks good. But I guess he's... I, I guess I have three names now. Faith Ford Nottingham. Is that the way you're doing it? You... Well, not legally. Sort of legally, legally, but not legally. Like, legally. still through SAG. I mean, like, on the show and everything, I'll still be Faith Ford, but... You, you know, know room for Nottingham. <laughs> Nottingham. Nottingham's a, a, a tough one. Uh, it's it's time for a break here, and we're bringing out we're just bringing out everybody here Let's as we as we go. On. Yeah, we'll just bring them all out. It'll be it'll be grand. I, I could even I don't even need to be here. Uh, we're gonna pause for a word from Anheuser Busch, makers of Michelob Dry and other spiffy products. Bergen is here, and Joe Regabuto, and, uh, and Faith Ford. We're all here from Murphy Brown, except for me. I'm just the host of this show. Our next guest uh, plays the uh, young hotshot executive producer, hotshot executive producer, uh, Miles Silverberg on Murphy Brown. Uh, he's making his late-night talk show debut, and we're honored that he's here. Here's uh, Grant Shot. Grant! Yeah. This is, 
get paid for this. this, is, this is, did you ever think you'd be bouncing on Candy Bergen's lap? Oh, I mean, tell the truth. When you were starting out as a kid, I mean, gee, this is pretty exciting. That's what I asked Santa Claus for. You know? <laughs> Seven years. <laughs> please, please. Yeah, I can understand. What is this, um... <laughs> I don't know why all this stuff's so distracting to me. I, <laughs> what was I talking about? You're, you're seeing the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> yes. How disgusting is this group? I mean, this. I mean, I mean, you know you're on television, and you have to behave a little bit in like you're borderline arrestable here. Right? <laughs> did you tell Pat about? Well, I did. I, I told him about the warrior, but he wouldn't go for it. I'm not asking you about that, so don't <laughs> don't, don't waste your time and mine. It's not. <laughs> The subject is not coming up. All right, now, on to other things. Let's talk about something important like baseball. All right. I'll I understand that this is your passion in life. Forget the news business. Do you read newspapers? Uh, the sports section. <laughs> That's it. Box scores. Uh, I'm told a challenge that if I name a major league team, you'll give me the starting lineup. I find this hard to believe. I hope I don't choke, but by the way. <clears throat> I'm not going to give you the Yankees. That'd be, well, that, actually, that could be tough. Come to think of it. That's true. Uh, yeah. That's harder than anything. Um, no, huh? Oh, there's a good one. Cleveland Indians. Cleveland Indians. All right. Okay. Um, third base is Brooke Jacoby. Shortstop is uh, Felix Furman. Felix Furman. Second baseman is Jerry Brown. Okay. First baseman is, uh, ooh, let me come back to him. Catcher oh. is uh, Al Andy Allenson. Yeah. Outfielder, outfield is uh, Joe Carter. Um, Uh-oh. I knew this was going to happen. Yeah. I guess, uh, Deion James is their DH. Brad Comiska is their center fielder. Uh, the left fielder is, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm spacing on the first left, baseman. Left fielder and first baseman. Well, uh, seven out of nine is Jeez, not And seven. that's Cleveland, too. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good. That's pretty darn good. I won't do any more here. Right. I, I mentioned this was the first time you've done a show like this at all. And you don't, well, you did, uh, didn't Donahue do something with, with this gang as well? Yeah. yeah. That, was that the swell? Did you have a swell time? Phil. We, we, we had yes, a Phil. nice time. Okay. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. nice. We like Phil. Uh, well, he's yeah, a likable like guy. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, now, that's the only other one you've done? A talk show? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, and I, don't, you don't, I don't see you in a lot of press. You don't do a lot of interviews. Are you reluctant to do these things? Do you have secrets in your life that you don't want to share? No, I guess I just got it in my mind. You know, I, um, you know, I, I grew up on, you know, guys like Pacino and De Niro and stuff like that, and I, I kind of wanted to emulate them. You know, when I moved to New York, I got a, a waitering job down in the, you know, 46th and 8th. Because you know, and I used to wear these big hiking boots and kick trash cans, and I used to just, just say, you know, I'm, I'm working right around the corner from the actor's studio. I mean, that's the closest I ever got to the actor's studio, but I was, you know. So I, and I, I just, you know, um, I just figured it might make it a little bit more difficult to play a character if, if you're too out there. You know, he has integrity, is what he's trying to say. Oh, well, I'm sorry, you'll have to leave. <laughs> yeah. uh, but I work well, with them anyway. Well, I guess that makes some sense for an actor, though, because, um, I, I mean, the personality could get it in the way of what you're playing. I, I mean, your real personality, if people get kind of caught up in that and what are you doing and, you know, who you're dating and all that kind of stuff. I think so. Yeah, I can't see it being anything but a distraction, you know? Um, and it might be fun for the moment yeah. to do that. I mean, I could. I, I'm actually, I don't have much of a life either. Ah, but so maybe that's going, it. It makes going on. Now we're, now we're hard, down to it, know? yeah. There's nothing to talk about. No, sure. I mean, you know, the, the, uh, the, uh, you know, the, <laughs> the pre-interview, he's like, well, what do you do when you're not at work? And I'm like, well, I go to movies, you know. I, <laughs> well, tell him about eat, your house, I guess. Ed. What happened to your house? My house got broken into. Oh, and what oh. were they eating? They ate my potato chips. <laughs> Wait a minute, you walked into your house and, and the thieves, the I burglars? walked into my house, uh, you know, luckily I had spent... Oh, I can't say that. Um, the cat did it. <laughs> cat, the cat did it. I uh, thought he said the cat, and I thought it was the cat. I don't, I don't think they're going to pick up on this, Faith. <laughs> we have to regress way Ooh, back in the story. Yeah. But, um, but uh, it's our first moment of real tension out here. I yeah. really like that. No, go ahead. So you wait. I mean, there really were burglars in your house? Well, yeah. I, I came home uh, one morning after having spent the night out, and uh, um, the door was... <laughs> That's a whole other story in itself, and you're not going to hear that one. What, uh, just out of curiosity, what time was this? It was about 10.30 in the, in the morning. 10.30 in the morning? You know, Friday morning, and... Uh, what part uh, of town were you coming from? I was coming from <laughs> the same, same, same side of the hill. You know? Oh, all right, yeah. Yeah. Uh, just down the street or like a long way away? Just, just, just down the street, actually. Uh, so you walk in, all right, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, you're getting warm. Um, <laughs> How many doors away? I walked in and, uh, I, I walked in and, and the door was open, 
You know, it wasn't like wide open, but like I thought I had locked it when I left. Yeah. And the door just, I would turn a handle and the door just kind of swung open. And I went, oh man, I forgot to lock the door. And I walked in and uh, there were potato chip crumbs like all over the place. And I just moved into this house. And the only <laughs> bit of food I had in the entire house was this bag of Ruffles potato chips. Uh -huh. And somebody kind of came into the house and kind of, you know, walked around the house eating potato chips, <laughs> kind of looking at everything, I guess. And, uh, you know, leaving potato chip crumbs all over the place. And the, I mean, my TV was there. My VCR was there. The only thing I could see that was gone was a, was a leather jacket. You know, so it was, uh, it was, it made it even more weird. Yeah. You know, I don't know, you know, the, the idea of somebody maybe sitting in your house waiting for you to come home. Yeah. It's a little bit scary. So someone so. just into, like, leather and ruffles. Leather and ruffles. <laughs> That's interesting. Very interesting. Well, you should do more talk shows. I got, I got myself one of those, uh, I just want the guy to know, I got one of those thumper softball bats. You know, it made me feel a lot better. Oh, God, so next time. Yeah, next right, time, right. right. And, I, and I spent all Friday night in the corner, in the dark. Like, <laughs> like that. Wasn't a pleasant. So even though you don't do a lot of these, I hope you've found this a pleasant experience. So, so far, oh, so good. Good, yeah. good, because it's time for a commercial, and then we'll bring out another of your uh, cohorts. And great. It'll be great. See, great. this was great. That's pretty it? famous. Yeah. 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 <laughs> do you want to sing or anything before we go to commercial? We seem to have a musically talented group here. Uh, any, anything you want to do? In a well, home? they already did Beavers out, didn't they? Oh. <laughs> Hi, Jenny. Hi, Jenny. Uh, we'll take a break, and, uh, and Charles Kimbrough will join us as well. So it's, it's Murphy Brown time, folks. <laughs> Welcome back to, to Donahue. Our subject today is <laughs> actors who try to be singers. And our next guest <laughs> is uh, plays hi uh, plays uh, plays anchorman uh, Jim Dial on the. Have we mentioned the series? It's called Murphy Brown. Uh, the season premiere is uh, next Monday night at nine o'clock on uh, CBS. Please welcome back Charles Kimbrough. Charlie. <laughs> The Kimbroettes are at it again. Uh, May, Thank you. <laughs> just a spontaneous demonstration. Must make you feel warm all over. Ten dollars a piece. <laughs> when, uh, you know, when we were watching those outtakes, it occurred to me that you, even when things were going awry, kind of stayed in character. You don't, there wasn't yeah, a lot well, of well, guffawing well, on your part. I, I, I have this breakup problem. When I do finally go, um, the elastic in my underwear breaks and... <laughs> Everybody has to, have to turn off the lights and go home. You know, like say, I'm very sorry. We're not, there's no show this week. Come back. So, not bad. Yeah. At the beginning, I was very worried, and I knew Jim never cracked a smile. So when we would do the, the readings, I'm getting a little better now. I kind of smile a little bit. But, but at the beginning, I was very serious. Yeah. Well, you had to be, sure. Now, I have to remind you of something that you said on your last oh, visit, no, visit no. to us. We're going to roll a piece of videotape. This is from Mr. Kimbrough's last visit on our show. Take, watch oh, your monitors. Right over there. There's always, you always know somehow there's a downside. There's going to be a downside. Yeah, because they're doing it well. They've lost they the last They always do it. They do few. very well. And, and they're in July, they're, they're fine. And people say, yes, but, you know, September's coming. Now, he was referring to the Chicago Cubs. Uh, and back when you were here in July, they were doing great. And you said, September's coming. And, and, and ladies and gentlemen, this was as of, actually as of yesterday, the standings in the National League. They won today. And they won. They beat the uh, New York Mets today. So actually, they are now five and a half up on the Mets as we're taping. We don't... Did they play the Expos today? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. If, so they're five up in the Expos. We don't know what St. Louis and, and New York did today. So. If, if making a fool of myself on national television gets them the pennant, it's a far, <laughs> far better than I've ever done. Yeah, I think that's great. Uh, it's something else we have in common, other than the than the Cubs, is we have both worked with Meryl Streep. Uh, I uh, I have a small but pivotal role in in, in a film due out around Christmas called. Uh, what what part of you was pivoting? We gotta hose you We're all down. Up here. Nice <laughs> here, no, what, now, well, you worked with her a couple, yes, a couple of times. Yes, I did. I did indeed. We, I worked at the, I did a season at the Phoenix Theater. This was years ago, and Meryl was very young. She was almost as young as I was. No, not so much, much younger than I. <laughs> yeah. But it, it, we, did, we did that, and then she did a movie, Seduction of Joe Tynan. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I, I had a, a role in that. 
And she was wonderful. She was wonderful all the time. She's one of those maddening people that always seems to be... It always seems to be cheerful and pleasant and wonderful. And she goes off and just kills the people. You know, it yeah. comes back and then she's just... Meryl again, you know. Yeah, you yeah, well, anyway, very, I get very angry at people. And I, I, th I, um, I think she has a future in this business. That was my impression watching, I think watching she her perform herself. with me. Yeah, it's possible. Yeah. Your wife lives back... In Dobbs Ferry. Under... And I, in Dobbs Ferry, New York. Yeah. Uh, and I live out here. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to ask, what's happening to those people? No, no, I assume it's, it's, no, it's, it's show just business. circumstances. It's sure. show business. Uh, is this working out okay? Uh, how it's, often? Yes, it's working out all right. It's a Wait, little... what's your first name? Jane. Good. Just, just Jane. <laughs> uh, <laughs> do, how often do you see this? Uh, woman? As often as we can. I sometimes, sometimes four, five, six weeks go by. Sometimes two months go by. But on hiatuses, we kind of, you know, go back and forth. I believe that's hiatus. I'm it? sorry. That's okay. Just, I used to think I used to think that was a hernia, and I came to California, <laughs> and I said we're having three hiatuses before yeah. Christmas, and I thought, oh. Now, is anything happening know. with your guy, Jim Dial, this year? Is he? Uh, uh, I think he gets an earring. <laughs> no, he doesn't. No, he doesn't, no, he doesn't. He doesn't he get doesn't. an earring. No, he doesn't. But uh, but we see we see we see the other side of him. We see the kind of sensual, uh, the sort of seething, passionate nature that lies just underneath. Are we going to get another <laughs> chorus of this Beaver song? I'm just sick of this stuff. I'm no, tired Jim of it. Is, no, Jim is the class of the show. We thought Candace was the class of the show, but she disqualified herself a long time. I'm getting a sense of that as, as we kind of go on here. Well, anyway, it's, it's great seeing you again. And uh, we, we have more folks we're going to meet. I mean, this how many people are in this cast? Oh, anyway, thousands. The stage is only so large, you know. Uh, actually, we will meet uh, Pat Corley in just a moment. And then we're going to meet the uh, the creator and the, and the producers. And then I think uh, a couple of the cameramen are coming out later <laughs> just to show us some of their equipment. Uh, we'll be back in just a moment. The Pat Sajak Show, sponsored by Hershey, the great American chocolate company. Murphy Brown is going to be premiering the uh, next uh, second season uh, next uh, Monday night, 9 o'clock on CBS. And our next guest plays uh, Phil the Bartender on that very show. Uh, he's been uh, in broad Broadway television films for over 45 years, and he's uh, coming out right now. Mr. Pat Corley. Pat! <laughs> Are you well? You okay? I know you were... Hiatai is actually a, a, a nation, an island nation, oh, south no. of Florida, somewhere where a lot of people come up and practice Hi. voodoo. Ah, thank you for clarifying that. Thank you so Wanted much. Wanted to straighten that well, out. Good night. Thank you for being here. Thank Brad. you. It's been a pleasure. Good night, Professor boss. Pat Corley. Oh, sit down. <laughs> Are you well? Are you good? I know you were... In, hey, you, I'm going to... You were... Hospital, not to bring this down here, but you were ill for a while with...